This video is going to go through a more robust data files, and it's also going to use vectors. So it's going to introduce or just be another example of vectors and also show you the type of error trapping that you should use with your data files. This example uses fstream because I'm going to both read and write or append to a file, so I want to use both of those. I have declared an integer vector just called numbers. I have a couple, a string variable for an input, and I don't actually know if I use that. We'll have to look at that. And then I have an integer input value. So my first um, line here for working with files is that I'm using one of these special flag characters for inputting a file. And you can find some of this information back on Blackboard if you take a look at the um, Google Sheet with data files information and you also look at these chapter 13 notes. The chapter 13 notes talks a little bit about these file mode flags and I am using them to both, I think, input and output or input and append. And so that's the kind of the advanced level for um, inputting and working with data files. And so all of those resources are available to you. If we go back to the online GDB here, as soon as I find it, robust data files. So, um, you need to use fstream in order to be able to use this ios in flag and so basically what this is saying is it's going to open up this file um, for inputting and then i immediately check to see this is a type of error trapping here okay this um checks to see if the program um, excuse me if the file opened successfully and so that's a type of error trapping that we talked about there's other ways that you can do this, this is just my way of doing this, and that is what happens is the when a text file is opened, it has what's called a um, an error. Um, uh, it automatically either determines true or false whether the file opened. And so if I say not my file, that's just check, checking to see whether or not the file opened correctly. So there is a uh, special um, value that's available to us to, to use and to check for that. So if we say, while not my file, that's checking to see if it opened correctly. If it didn't, it's going to say see out error. This is an example, and then it returns zero, which is I would normally not tell you to exit the program, but this is going to exit gracefully, so to speak. Um, well, not so gracefully, but it does exit the program so nothing else gets executed, which you want to have happen if the file did not open. Now, this would actually be an ideal place to put some exception handling if you want to add that to your program. Next, um, I'm going to delete this line because we don't use that anymore. I am going to then input a value from the file. Now, I know that my data file has integers in it because my data is just um, some numbers here. And let me clean up some of these numbers, get rid of these spaces in that file. So we have just some numbers in the data file here. And so it is going to input a value. This is a second type of error trapping right here. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to read until the end of the file. Because right now we don't know how many pieces of data are in that file. So we want to make sure that we read until the end of the file. And so that's what this line of code will do. So my file will throw a fail error if there's not data there. And so if I check to see while I haven't thrown that error, I'm going to keep reading in numbers. I am using a vector. And so remember, um, if you're working with vectors, a good resource is this c++.com with vectors. And remember, when you're working with vectors, we are going to have a um, I'm going to scroll down here. We're doing a push back, which is adding an element. Um, I'm not going to do a pop back at all, but we're doing a push back. But there, and we're also going to use, I believe, the dot size, which returns the size of the um, vector. And I'm also going to show, I believe, just a little bit of information on using these iterators. So don't forget to go to your alternative resources, the c++.com and the geeks for geeks as needed to look up the information. So what's going to happen here is input value was read in here. I made sure that I wasn't at the end of my file so that it's an OK value. And then I'm pushing it onto or into my vector. So this particular line right here adds the number to a vector. And my vector is called numbers. 
I am outputting that value just to, I'm, that's just me doing some echo checking. I'm checking to see that the data was actually entered um, and then I'm outputting it so I know what was put into my vector. And then I repeat the process. So notice that I have this line of code repeated. I prompt and read it in before my loop and then while I'm in my loop, I'm gonna basically keep doing this loop until I reach the end of the file, okay? When I'm done with the program, then I need to close it. When I output the vector on the screen, I'm going to use a regular like array notation. You can do that with a vector, but please notice that I'm using this numbers.size, which is one of those vector commands that we could use, vector methods that we could use. So I'm using just a regular for loop and it's outputting the numbers to the screen. We will see that execute in just a minute. I just have a blank indel to add some spacing. I did use an iterator example here. If you guys want to uncomment this, I'll post this code to um, Blackboard as well. If you want to uncomment that, this is a different way to output and it's using what's called an iterator. And it also uses the auto um, indexing that was mentioned in our Blackboard information, but it uses dot begin and dot end. And so instead of the dot size, and that's what's called an iterator. And so it starts at the beginning of the vector and goes to the end of the vector. And it also uses pointer notation to print out the vector uh, value. Now, um, please notice that I closed the file up here. So I opened it up, I read some data in, and I closed the file. And then I printed out what I, what I entered or what I had in my vector just to see what, that I had everything there, okay? Now I'm switching gears in the same process here or same main I am now going to open the file and I am going to modify it okay so I'm opening the file to receive a modified copy or basically to change it I'm opening it with F stream and I'm creating an out file because I want to change the output and so I'm telling it that I'm going to open it for output and I'm going to append to the end of the file this is a flag that's um, going to tell me that I'm going to append so same error message here. We talked about that earlier. This is not the best way to do this and exception handling might be better, but it is some error trapping and you must have error trapping for your exemplary project. So at least to do this much. And then I'm going to have the user input new data and they're gonna keep inputting data until they hit negative one. So they have a sentinel value. So I input new data from the user. If that new data does not equal negative one, I am going to out use the output file. I'm gonna write that data to the end of the file and then hit enter or do an indel. And then I keep doing this until the person enters negative one and then I have to close my output file, okay? So this program will read from a file, print it to the screen, and then it will add additional data at the end of the file. So I'm going to click save and we're going to run this code and we're going to see what gets printed on our screen. And we'll cross our fingers that there are no errors that occur. So it should be accessing this numbers.txt, and it did. And then there's my output prompt using a regular for loop. I should have put an end L in there before that. And now it says enter new values. So it jumped right away into the entering the new values. So I'm gonna enter uh, the number 13, because I know that wasn't in the file. Press enter the number 14, the number 15, and then negative one to quit. And then my program exited. If I open up my numbers.txt file now, I should see the 13, 14, and 15 written to the file, and I do see it there at the end of the file. So it is successfully appending to the end of the file. So this example shows you, with the use of a vector, how you can open a file, read data in, check for successful file opening, check until the end of the file is reached, close the file, output it and then we scroll down and open the same file for output or and appending and again check to see if it was open successfully and we then um, got new data wrote that data to the file and again closed the file so this is an example program um, showing you all that I did not execute this iterator here um, but this code here would do exactly the same code that is listed here. So if you're wanting to play around with or use an iterator and the auto loop, you could. 
The only thing I might add up here is just an extra indel, so that cleans up my output just a little bit and puts that on the next line. Okay.